Is buying a portable sawmill worth it? Stay tuned to find out. I purchased my portable sawmill almost a year ago now, and I've received a lot of questions about it since then. The main questions are, why did I choose a bandsaw mill over a chainsaw mill? Am I happy with the quality of my Woodland Mills sawmill? Is it worth it to buy a portable sawmill for personal use? Is it a good business investment? I wanted to hold off on giving my opinion until I had used my portable sawmill through all four seasons, so that I would have a good grasp of the pros and cons of owning one. And so four seasons later, here we are. The portable sawmill I own is a Woodland Mills HM126. Now, just to be clear, this is not a sponsored video. This is just my opinion, straight and simple. The HM126 comes with 10 feet of track, a 9.5 horsepower Kohler engine, and a cutting head that is capable of handling logs up to 26 inches in diameter. I bought the 6 foot track extension so that I would be able to process logs up to 16 feet in length. I've since used the sawmill to construct a tool shed and to begin work on a log cabin that I'm currently building. If you're interested in seeing those videos, check out the card that will appear on the video now. The links to them will also be in the description below. Anyway, let's get down to it. First of all, my decision to buy a portable bandsaw sawmill over a chainsaw mill was easy. Chainsaw mills are built to be ultra portable. If you own a high quality chainsaw with a big bar, the rest of the equipment could be thrown onto the back of a four-wheeler, into a boat, or even a bush plane in some cases. On the other hand, the thickness of the chain compared to the ultra-thin profile of a bandsaw blade means a chainsaw mill is inefficient by comparison. It takes more fuel to rip each board, plus the chain wastes more wood per cut. Another huge downside to a chainsaw mill is that it takes longer to set up for each log. However, a portable sawmill can get going on a log with much less prep, which means a ton of time saved overall. Here's my overall opinion on purchasing chainsaw mills versus portable bandsaw mills. If you're working in an extremely remote area, only reachable by boat or four-wheeler, then probably your only option is a chainsaw mill. Although the equipment is much cheaper than buying a bandsaw mill, remember that you'll also have to get yourself a high-end chainsaw if you don't already own one. However, if you're able to get a truck or even a tractor back to where you need to go, then I think a portable bandsaw mill is the best option. But it'll pay you back in time and money saved. On to the next question. Am I happy with the quality of my Woodland Mills sawmill? The short answer is yes, I am extremely happy with my purchase from Woodland Mills. I love using their HM126 and I have zero regrets in buying it. Now for the longer answer. These are the things I loved about it, and things that I'm not too crazy about. But before I get into talking about the equipment, I first want to mention the people behind the product. I took a road trip down to the Woodland Mills headquarters in Ontario, and I spoke with the representatives in person. I just gotta say, they are awesome people. They're friendly and extremely helpful. The company is well managed and the employees obviously love what they do, which I think indirectly speaks to the quality of their product. The salespeople and warehouse manager happily answered my slew of questions. After speaking with them, I felt completely comfortable putting my money down on one of their sawmills. They also have great follow-up support and are happy to troubleshoot with their customers even after the purchase has been made. Anyway, on to the equipment. It has a Kohler engine, which is a solid product. I've ran it in all kinds of weather, and it always fires right up and runs without any issues. The track is solid and well made. The log clamps are easy to use and strongly secure the log. The blade is easy to put on and take off for sharpening. The adjustable feet help to level the track on uneven ground. The cutting head is easy to raise and lower. The whole assembly rolls smoothly and easily on the track. 
the sawmill is fairly easy to assemble and we didn't run into any problems while putting it together. The parts are cheap, easy to replace, and most of them, like the bearings, can be purchased from most hardware stores. Now onto the negative stuff. I'm kind of reaching here because I can't find much wrong with it, but here goes. Since there was no place I could put the sawmill on level ground, we did our best to level some cinder blocks in the ground. We then used the adjustable feet to compensate for the remaining difference. However, we still found it quite hard to perfectly level the track. It took us a long time to get it right, and when the ground thawed in the spring, we had to re-level the track all over again. Basically, if the sawmill is on uneven ground, I found it almost impossible to make 100% level. However, the slight variance in the track hasn't shown up in the boards at all, which is the most important thing. Here's my recommendation. If you can get away with putting the sawmill on a concrete slab that is already level, then do that. That way, you can avoid the leveling problem altogether. Or, if you can build a trailer to set it on, you wouldn't have to worry about leveling it either. It's easier to level a trailer than it is to level a sawmill with its several independent sections of track to deal with. The good news is that Woodland Mills provides a detailed trailer design on their website to help get you started. Now, I know that Woodland Mills will likely see this video, as I know they've seen my last video on their sawmill. So if you're listening Woodland Mills, I would love it if you guys could begin manufacturing sawmill trailers to go with your sawmills. And when you do, please let me know, because I'd love to get my hands on one. Anyway, that's the only negative thing I can say about an otherwise excellent portable sawmill. Now, on to the third question. Is it worth buying a sawmill for personal use? My short answer is yes, I think so at least. Purchasing a portable sawmill is a great idea for someone who owns a healthy chunk of bush lot and uses lumber on at least a semi-regular basis, maybe to build or repair their outbuildings, or to construct their own high-quality furniture. If you're willing to invest the time, why go to the hardware store to pay for lumber when you can make your own for next to nothing? And why pay thousands of dollars for that harvest table your wife has always been wanting in the kitchen when you can build your own, with your own trees, at a fraction of the cost? And now the final question. Is it worth buying a sawmill as a business investment? My short answer is, maybe. If you're hoping to make a little extra cash on the side by selling some quality lumber or furniture, then go for it. But if you're hoping to make it a full-time gig, then you're going to need a much more expensive sawmill with hydraulics and some automation. Although processing lumber with a portable sawmill is much quicker than using a chainsaw mill, it still takes a good amount of time to process each log. The log must be manually loaded, secured, and rolled. The blade height must also be manually adjusted for each cut. This can eat up a good amount of time. Accounting for the time spent processing and the value of the lumber being processed, I highly doubt you'd be able to make a good living at selling 2x4s and 2x6s. But I do think there's money to be made with the higher quality woods involving less cuts. For example, maple slabs can sell for a good price and they require far less cuts than making actual boards. I also think good money can be made from constructing furniture made from more valuable woods. Anyway, I hope that was helpful. Just remember, this is only my opinion. If you ask someone else, they might have a different take on the topic. That's it for now. I'll see you in the next one.